<laughs> what a great trailer. And what a great program. And what a great actor. I'm very honored and happy to welcome Rose, Rose Bolton, AKA Michael McElhatton. Please come on stage. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hi and welcome. Hello. So how are you? Uh, I'm good, <laughs> I'm good. It's, uh, I can't see any of you, so that's uh, a okay. huge advantage. And I, yeah, we have I to wasn't get... pelted with any rotten fruit considering the antics I've been up to for the last few seasons. So <laughs> I'm very grateful for that. Yeah, you look quite nice because normally you're always having, wearing this very heavy leather stuff. And yeah, you and look furs. really well, big Well, I live in the strong. north, you know, I live in the north and it's pretty cold up there, so, you know. <laughs> We, uh, we can kind of sleep in our furry cloak that you can uh, see there, so. Okay, but I'm very It's a little warmer here today. Yeah, it's yeah. very warm today, yeah. to, be, yeah. to be honest. Um, but it's great that you made your way here. And it's very nice to talk to someone in your role who is such a villain. It's then, there are many bad characters in Game of Thrones, Wrong. but you're one of the Baddest yeah, or meanest, he, yeah, probably. Yeah, he probably is one of the meanest. Well, I, I don't see him that way. I see him as a, you know, I don't think you can approach him to play him like a baddie. He's, uh, he's uh, you know, he's a very practical man, and he is out to <laughs> um, really uphold his house, House Bolton, that is like Tywin Lannister or any of the heads of any of the houses. It's uh, his primary objective to look after the house and for its longevity and to, to look after its heir or find its heir and and keep it going. So yes, his methods are uh, a little harsh and a little cruel. Yeah, it's, a, it's a very nice description that could be almost anybody else. It but could be. It could be any politician, I suppose, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. he's meaner. And he's an interesting character because he, 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 he's not, as we, you know, when you see Ramsay, you know exactly who he is and how mean he is. But with Ruse, it's, it's yeah, slightly he, different. Yeah, it's more, I, th I suppose it's more really what Ruse doesn't say than what he does say. Ramsey, it's, you know, pretty upfront, you know. You, <laughs> <laughs> you, you pretty know pretty much what that guy is up to, really. I, I don't think there's any other hidden secrets there. But uh, Ruse is a much, um, he plays the long game. And uh, he, uh, you never really know what he's thinking or what he's doing. And I think that's why something like The Red Wedding was such a shock and mm -hmm. in the way it was done. And I think that was one of the primary goals of, of Dan and David, the two showrunners, that in the books he's a more obviously creepy guy and, and weird guy, but they, they made him a very strong ally of Rob Stark, which added to the shock factor of The Red Wedding, really. So you just mentioned the book. Have you read the books? I read the first two after I was offered the role, and then I'm a very slow reader. And then we started um, <laughs> we started the series, and then I realized that the the character in the series is written very differently. It's the same trajectory, and he does the same things, but in the books, and I'm sure a lot of you know and have read the books, he's a, a more obviously creepy guy, you can't read any emotions on his face, you know, people describe him, you know, anger and joy seem pretty much the same in his face, he talks in a whisper, he has regular leechings, um, and then we, when we got to the uh, first day of shooting, uh, he wasn't written like that, and I had mm -hmm. to change it kind of completely, so. Uh, so how was that process, because you were, you were preparing for a different kind of character, and then yeah, you came to so set, I kinda, and it was Well, I just couldn't really learn it on the, on the first day, and it was the, a big ba the aftermath of a battle. Okay. And I was, yeah, I was absolutely terrified. I was absolutely terrified. And I remember just kept looking over to Dan and David going, is that right? And they went, yeah, that's what we want. They keep going. So that's where. So what were you thinking when, when they called you, to, that you sort of like in? Was it like because you were, you were doing a casting or how did yeah, you get well, it? Yeah, I, I, I went up for it in the first uh, season. And I went for many roles in, in the very first season and uh, didn't get any of them. And then I thought, well, they're not interested, they've, uh, they've moved on. And then I think they were probably halfway through the casting of the second season and I just got a call about playing this guy, Ruse Bolton, and I didn't know anything about him. So I immediately went to my friends and asked, and they said, oh no, it's a great part, it's a really good part. You know, okay, so you, you were jumping up, up, high yeah, yeah. up and <laughs> yeah. saying, yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I made it. Well, I wasn't gonna say no, was I? Anyway. <laughs> okay, so. thank God you didn't. Yeah. So but, but this, what's the greatest challenge for portraying Ruse as an actor? 
Well, I mean, it's, it's all given to you. I mean, the scripts are so fantastic, and the scenes are so fantastic, and it's, you know, um, it's everything you could want, really, you know, and, and also the, the characters, you, the actors you get to work with and the directors. So it's not really a challenge, really. It's, um, it's given to you, and it's a joy to play. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a real, real joy to play. Uh, I suppose the odd thing, I've never been in a series that is on running where you don't know what's going to happen to the character next. Normally with a, a play or a film or even a miniseries, there's a beginning, middle, and an end, where with this, you just have to play it in the moment, and you can't... You know, I try not to listen to any of the, the many theories that are online or stuff like that because you can only play what's, what you're given and what you're written, and that's exactly what the writers and the showrunners want you to do. And but isn't that something really different to the normal work? Because if you, as you just mentioned, normally you know where it's going to, the, the, the character, yeah. and you see the end, and here it's, it's so open. Isn't it more difficult to, to play well, such Well, no, a... you, just, you just play that, that, the, the scenes that you have. Okay. And I, I think if you knew the end, if we knew the end, maybe you would play it differently, you know? Okay. So I think, uh, who knows, you know? And maybe in season six, Ruse will turn out to be really... Cuddly, nice guy with a pipe mm. and slippers. <laughs> and we love him. I won't believe that, okay. <laughs> I doubt it, but anything can happen. So, but, but the interesting, what is more interesting for, for you as an actor? Normally, the, the villain guys are more interesting, aren't they? Because yeah. it's their more aspects in, in, the, in the portraying of the person because you can be mean and you can be more... Yeah, and you get, you know, you're, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's great playing the baddies. Good guys are hard to play. The, the, the baddies uh, often get the best lines and, you know, great costumes. And, uh, you know, so, uh, yeah, I, lo I love playing him. He's, he's, a, he's a joy to play. But I, I don't view him as a, a villain or as a, mm -hmm. as a baddie, really. And it's, what's really interesting is my relationship with my, Son, and I think it's, it's I, I love all the relation, the parent-child relationships in the series. They're incredibly complex and mm -hmm. incredibly, uh, incredibly real. And I suppose in the Ramsey Ruse relationship, it's a, a bastard son who desperately needs the love and respect and affection of a father who refuses to give it to him. Uh, and but it's you know they they use each other, mm. and that's. Um, a really interesting dynamic, but I don't think either trusts each other at all. And I wouldn't trust Ramsey. <laughs> no, and I wouldn't trust Ruse either. Yeah, you know? you're right. And I think Ruse is probably the is the smarter player. Um, so, who knows what's going to happen really in the next season? Uh, I presume everybody here has seen season five, have they? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. So I'm very not giving good. away any spoilers, but you know. You could say, you know, if you love somebody in Game of Thrones, if a character, you're in a very vulnerable position. Very you know, much. You know. You're totally right. Never you know, trust on anybody. Never anybody. fall in love and don't have kids and, yeah. you know, you'll be fine. But um, <laughs> I've got one and I've got another one on the way. And uh, there's rumors in the books that my Ramsey has killed my previous two sons. So... Um, I don't know, it would appear like he's left himself in a very vulnerable position, but hmm. I think he's smarter than that. But who knows, I could get... We haven't even seen the scripts for season six, so... So you don't know? I don't, don't know. Okay. Yeah. If one seen to... one, Ruse gets it in the back. I don't know. <laughs> don't okay, know. we will see then. We'll see. But it's a very interesting relationship they both have, Ramsey and his father. Because I, when I saw it, I, I wasn't really sure why he said, yes, I will accept you as a son. And then the heir comes, and the normal way would be, okay, sorry, now you're out of the way because I have an heir. Yeah. And so it's, it's quite interesting that he's sort of like keeping him in the level as the real son. Yeah, well, he legitimized him at the end of four, and I suppose that was probably before Walder got pregnant, I'm <laughs> assuming, you know? And he has proved himself to be uh, uh, a great tactician, and he took Maud Kalen for me, which was an, against unsurmountable odds, and he, which helped me become Warden of the North. So he's, he's, he's pretty good in battle. He's very useful, uh, despite his psychotic tendencies. <laughs> and, um, Poor Sansa. <laughs> even when he, went, when, I sent, when he went out to, uh, you know, to Stannis, he... he, he helped really there, mm -hmm. you know, defend Winterfell. So he's useful in that way. But at the same time, maybe Ruse sent him out 
hoping maybe he'd get killed. Or if he did get killed, it wouldn't be much mm. of a matter because he now has another child. So you never know. I think that's what's interesting about him. He, it's, in some situations, it's a win-win a for the character. Mm. It's very interesting because when, when working on this Game of Thrones thing, besides that it's very, very famous and very, very loved by many people, what's, what's the main difference for you to work on this specific series is it totally different to others oh it's totally different yeah why well just <laughs> something on this scale and the size of it it's okay. i've never worked on anything everybody who works on it is at the the top of their game um the scripts are incredible the, the cast you get to work with are incredible the costumes the sets just you you go on set and there's no imagining required i mean winterfell is there it is a giant mm. castle you can walk around the battlements it's it's incredible, you know, like 40 horses come riding up and with 40 riders, it's... Does that help yeah, in acting? Yeah, it's, it's incredible. Because it feels I mean, more it's, real. Well, you, you just see that you're in, you're in a team of incredible people. So going to work, you, you really have to step up to the plate. You know, mm -hmm. you really have to be prepared because a working day in Game of Thrones is a pretty full-on working day. And we kind of shoot from 8 in the morning till 6 in the evening, right through with no lunch break. Wow. Maybe two, three cameras, and you do one scene, maybe two per day, max. Wow. So it's very intense. You do a lot of takes, and that's why that's why it's so good because they have you know they have time and they have money and they spend they spend it mm. uh, on the season. But it's um, yeah. So it, it just it always blows my mind every time I go up there. You, you just know. mentioned the costumes. Are they really, because especially your ones, look really heavy? They're really, really heavy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's high def, which um, can be a blessing in some ways. But no, the chain mail I wear is real. It's a, like a full shirt okay. down to here, and it's real metal. So I think between that and the cloak, and on a muddy day, it's like the equivalent of carrying a eight-year-old child on your back. So it's, it's pretty heavy. And yeah. you need a lot of help yeah. to put it on and take well, it off. Well, it's particularly tricky getting on and off horses, yeah. <laughs> okay. If you throw your leg too high, and you could um, end up in the mud. So, so no accidents at all? No, no accidents at all, no, no. Um, you also mentioned the, the Red Wedding scene, which is probably one of the most famous scene in all seasons together. Um, how was that done? Because it's, it's very hard and it's very intense. Um, yeah, it was one of the most extraordinary filming experiences I've had. It took five days to shoot, and uh, a fantastic director called David Nutter directed it, and he's a kind of a, a legend in America. He's done something like 16 pilots that have all gone to series. Okay. And we, we all met, everybody rehearsed um, it for uh, half a day, I think, and we rehearsed it like a play. And we ran it from the start right to the very end till Caitlin's throat mm -hmm. is slashed. And we ran it, and we ran it, and ran it. And he just shouted orders that, you know, like Rob runs forward. Rob gets hit with an arrow. First band of Stark men come up, they're hit. Ruse, get out of there. Caitlin under the table. And we ran it, and we ran mm -hmm. it, and we ran it. So we knew the whole effect that it would have. And that was really incredibly helpful to the actors. And then at the end of the day, he said, we'll do up to this point Monday this point Tuesday okay. and it took five days and it was an amazing experience I mean the lighting was like a Vermeer painting I remember there was a guy just going around with his iPad you know just changing it and it was incredible and on the last day it was incredibly moving it was the last day of uh, Michelle Fairley who plays Caitlin and Richard Madden who plays Rob and they'd been in the series for five years and they were dying, and it was going to be the end of it. And it was very palpable, um, the emotion yeah, in the room. Yeah, I can imagine and that. They didn't want to leave, and <laughs> I think Richard just finished crying, and he just left and got on the plane and went. And so it was a big, big moment, you know, because for the younger actors as well, you yeah. know, it's, it, it's been, and for all the actors involved, but particularly somebody like Richard, it was like his second or third job, and such a huge part. So, but all of that added to mm -hmm. the brilliance of the scene, really. And how is it um, being? in a series for such a long time, because it's different. Normally you do something, you shoot it, then it comes out and you have to do something else. And you, you sort of, but you don't feel like, not, not stuck is probably the wrong word, but it's, it's a very long period. You're working with the same people. So is this, 
is well, it actually, it's the, it's the opposite, actually, because we work incredibly few days on Game of Thrones. Okay. I mean, it shoots over five months with three full units, but generally, on average, a scene takes probably a day to shoot. Um, most characters are probably in one scene. Not every character is in all ten episodes, so quite feasibly, you could be in five or six episodes, do five or six days filming, and be a lead character in the series. Okay. So it takes up an incredibly short amount of time. So is uh, it hard to go back into? No, the it's very easy. I mean, look, I've been doing it a long time now, so it's not. So someday, you know, I could do a day. I, I might end up doing a day in July, and not film again. Do another maybe two days in September or something like that. But it's it's great. No, it's, it's Dream gig. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine that. Dream gig. <laughs> so and you, and you also said that you so get up front, you get the whole scripts from the whole season, which is normally you, you get two Yeah, I think that's one, of the, one of the strengths of it, because it's such a labyrinthine plot, and all ten scripts arrive and will arrive any day, I hope, and we get them, and they don't change. Very, you know, the odd line might change, but for, for all the departments, it's, it's set out, and that is not the way with TV. Generally, mm -hmm. you know, you may get the first few episodes and the writing as it goes on. So you know exactly the story, it's set in stone, and the dialogue, you're not allowed to change the dialogue, nor would no, you want to, be, okay. because it's, um, it's so well written, you know, so. Um, if there would be someone out there who has never seen Game of Thrones, how would you describe it? What is the, the strength or the, the phenomena about it? besides being accurate and having all these great actors and the costumes and, and the locations. What, is the, what makes it so special? Well, it's built as a fantasy, but I don't really see it as a fantasy. I mean, um, I think it's a, a family and political drama with incredibly complex characters and mm. incredibly complex storylines, which just weaves tighter and tighter with, with each season. And they come, obviously, from a fantastic source material in George or R. Martin's books. But it's, I suppose, where Lord of the Rings is about good and evil. Um, Game of Thrones is all the stuff in between, all the gray areas in between. And it's the characters, I think, that, that people really love. And there are so many, and they are so varied. And mm. uh, everybody can see something in them. And I think it's their relationships and the way the characters change. We, we hate characters, and then two or three seasons in, we empathize and sympathize with them and, and vice versa, like we do in life and like we do with, mm. with, with people and our friends and people we don't know. And I think that's one of the real, real strengths of, of the writing. Um, and it shocks, it still shocks and uh, amazes me. You know, I, I, I read the scripts around this time of the year and then I watch it when it comes out in around March and April and, you know, I still watch it on my couch going, <gasps> and get excited and thrilled Although and amazed. Although you've, you've, you've yeah. written it. Uh, and like most, mo most things you, you, know, you read, you, you imagine it in a certain way, and very rarely is it as good as you imagined it. But Game of Thrones always is as good and frequently better, mm -hmm. uh, which is quite a testament to it, I think. And it's very modern. It's okay, everyone is wearing old clothes, and, and it's in a certain period of time, but the, the, the conflicts between the people and the political conflicts are very, very modern. That's probably one success as well, because... Yeah, but they're, they're, the, they're, they're arguing, you know, they're the same you know, things that happened 500 years ago, aren't they? You know, it's struggle for power and infidelity mm -hmm. and lust and greed, and it's all the classic emotions. And I think, I think one of the... As I said earlier, the, the you know the parent-child relationships. Mm -hmm. I love those things. I think they're they're really interesting. Parents who are disappointed in their children, children who hate their fathers, mothers, whatever like that. You know, it's it's. Um, I think it's yeah, they're universal themes that have been around for centuries, aren't mm. they? And because sometimes people, are, I know a few people who said it's it's too brutal for them, but. It is, of course, very hard and brutal sometimes, but I think it's 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 necessary in a way because these times, if they have, if one could imagine of the Middle Age, they, of course, it was very brutal at that time. So it's yeah, it's there's sort of no like courts. Realistic. I mean, I, there was one scene with Tyrion in the in the courts, but it, it's live and die by the sword, and it is a very very brutal world, and that was set up very clearly in the first scene with with Sean Bean that was so so <laughs> shocking. 
you know? And I think violence should be shocking and ugly and mm. brutal and short, and it is. And I think the violence is never gratuitous or... Um, I know there was an awful lot of controversy about the rape recently, mm -hmm. and I don't want to really talk about that, but I thought it was... It wasn't sexualized or normalized or trivialized. No, I, not at you all. Know? No. Um, and I thought it was brilliantly done. So, yes, it is a cruel and vicious and violent and ugly world, but I think it's done incredibly well, mm. you know? Yeah, you just mentioned... And lots of people, I'm sure, cheer when, you know, the people they don't like get their head chopped off, you know? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and they're very brave, because it was the first program I've ever seen where they kill the main character of first season mm. at the end. And yeah. it was just like, they cannot do that. Mm. Why... Did, they, they're really brave, and they're doing it all the time, as we all know. Yeah, yeah, we've seen do. it. And you never guess. I think that's what's really brilliant. They so always wrong Never be friends with someone in the, yeah, in the program. Yeah, Well, never love anybody in Game of Thrones, because you <laughs> don't have kids and don't fall in love in Game of Thrones. Yeah, and it's you'll a hard... be fine. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever met um, George R. R. Martin? I have. I met George so, R. R. Martin. And so how is he? Because when you see him, I've just saw him. He's under On pressure to write books, as if yeah, he Yeah, of is. course. <laughs> <laughs> so I met him at breakfast. We had the premiere in San Francisco, and I said, how are you doing? I said, yeah, are you getting on? And he said, good. And I said, are you sitting in on the edit for this? And he went, I really need to get writing. <laughs> <laughs> so what will so happen if he, if he stops writing? Because there was this rule. Okay, he won't. I think he's just under huge pressure, you know, okay. to do it. And I think he's probably going to do it at his own speed, as he should do, because the books are so good and... You know, they'll come out whenever they need to come out. So, because you've said you, you, you don't know nothing about season six now. Nothing. Nothing, but you know that you will be in there. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you have a Maybe plan. I won't be in six and I'll be in seven. I mean, who okay. knows? Who knows? So, okay. But uh, I, I don't know. But yes, there is the storyline now set up with... So you the don't have a baby. shooting plan now already, mm. where you know, okay, we'll be shooting next year. No, I literally year. know nothing. I know nothing. I know okay. nothing. I know. I know I'm in it. See, no, I do know I'm in. So season never six. trust Game of Thrones. I know I'm in season six, but that's that is all all I know. So, um, would you like to be, besides the decision of the author, would you like to be part of it till the very end? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. It's. Uh, it's an amazing thing to be part of. As I said, everybody, all the departments you work with, and it's, mm. it's, it's just such, just such fantastic work and such uh, gratifying work to do. And the directors you work with are all from, you know, they're originally in the first few series were from this fantastic stable of HBO who directed The Sopranos and The Wire and all these incredible shows. And so to get with, to work with people like that only raises your game mm. to work with the designers and the other actors. When you work at that level, you step up to the plate, and that's very, very exciting to do. So I think everybody would like to be in it to the end. <laughs> but as we know, we won't. <laughs> so I'm fully prepared for the chop this year, but you never know. <laughs> yeah, prepare yourself. Yeah. So everybody wants to be in there, but probably everyone wants to ask questions. So now is the moment. Please raise your hands or arms, and we give you a microphone. And now is your chance. Are there any questions? There's Here. one. In the front. Um, yeah. Um, everyone who watches the show, like there are lots of characters and lots of storylines, and everyone like has a favorite to follow. Do you have one? The Boltons. <laughs> <laughs> what a surprise! What a surprise! Oh, I, I love so many of so many of the storylines. Uh, um, I do love, I loved all the small chamber stuff, and I loved, uh, uh, I loved Charles Dance and all those dynamics. I loved that, the, the early stuff with him and Aria. Um, but uh, yeah, I, lo I love all the storylines. I can't, I can't think of any, any, anyone's uh, particular favorite. I love the Jamie and Brian, you know, duo that, that went throughout uh, season three. Um, God, I'm sorry, blanking now, but uh, yeah, they, they would be. And the Boltons, obviously. They're, they're just fab. Yeah. More questions? Uh, I read uh, somewhere in the web that maybe Jon Snow will live again in season six. Is that true? Do you know? 
You know I can't answer that. <laughs> Was the question that, that he will return in season six? Um, I do not know. <laughs> I do not know, I'm sorry. But anything can happen. But as far as I've heard, no. But. What a shame. HBO have snipers everywhere. I can <laughs> take me out. Okay. <laughs> so, next question, please. Hi there. Good evening Hello. and welcome to Berlin. Thank you. I was just curious what it's like working with the child and teenage actors who are growing up as the season progresses, and if you could comment on that, please. Sure. Well, the only... Uh, I've worked with so few actors, really, you know, in Game of Thrones. In, in, in the first few seasons, it was uh, Caitlin and Rob, and last year was with um, Sophie, who's, who's grown up, and she's just... A wonderful, wonderful actress, fantastic, and so is self-assured, and uh, I think she loves the fact of her her character's change now. She, you know, she's becoming this steelier, more grounded, and she's been groomed by little fingers, so. But she's been a pleasure, yeah, a pleasure to work with, but she's the only, I think she's the only younger actress I've worked with, but a real joy, yeah, a real joy. Hello, good evening. I wanted to ask which character you were most shocked about when he or she died. <laughs> well, Ned Stark, I think, was, <laughs> you know, incredibly shocking, even though I'd heard it and, and you watched it. I, th I, I, thought it was, I thought it was really, really uh, shocking. I think, you know, I read the scripts, so it's, um, it's hard. I thought that even though I knew the Red Viper's death, I jumped off the couch when when I saw that moment and he had his skull crushed, it was an incredible sequence. Mm. Um, and I was really, really shocked to see that. Um, I was sorry to see Charles Dance go, but um, what a way to go <laughs> on the toilet. But, um, but Ned, I think, yeah, Ned, Ned Stark probably was the most shocking. Yeah. More questions? Hi, um, Hi, I have a question. What would be your f favorite kind of death in the series? <laughs> <laughs> we will send an email to HBO. An email, yeah. I would like to die. <laughs> oh, in a dragon fight, maybe. Burnt by a dragon, fighting a white walker. Um, God, yeah, maybe one of those, something kind of spectacular. I just don't want to be stabbed. That's a little too ordinary, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, being burned to death by a dragon or, or uh, yeah. Why is he not on Arya's list, by the way? I don't know. He must be on I don't know, top, but don't tell one. her. I don't tell her, yeah. No, Walder Frey is on, so uh, I don't know why. Yeah, on two, probably. I think he probably gets, does he get top billing, really, in, in the list for the Red Wedding, really? And I'm probably second, so. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, so killed that's a good by thing, though. I think that's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> killed by Arya. Yeah. <laughs> oh, killed by Arya. Yeah, that'd be good. I mean, I'd love with a dragon. I'd and love a scene with Arya. Arya is great. I'd, Arya I'd, I'd, on a dragon. Arya on a dragon. <laughs> and me on a white walker. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting improvement. <laughs> Any more questions? Hi. Uh, Alexa, um, do you hate Ramsay as much as we do? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, no, I, it's, it's, it's strange, isn't it, that dynamic, how he lets him away doing all his sadistic things, and, you know, he lets him go so far, and then he just pulls the chain, and then he can just wound him, you know, with a phrase. Uh, it's a very, very weird and strange, strange relationship, but I, I, I don't hate him. I... I, I I'm using him. I, I, I value his, his military, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, experience, experience his military experience, and he's proved useful to me. I, I don't think I trust him an inch, and I think I'm incredibly wary of him, and I think he's incredibly wary of me, but uh, I don't hate him, but I, I, I think I lack, yeah, I don't respect his sadistic and evil qualities, really, and I'd like him to be more political, and as I said in the very first season of Five, you know, it's, you know, flaying a man is not the way forward, it's through marriage and befriending the 
the people of the north. Uh, so I'd like him to be more, more politic, I think. So. But I don't think he's going to change. <laughs> no. Befriending, wow. Hmm. <laughs> it's interesting word. <laughs> okay, next one, please. Um, I want, just wanted to ask, who do you think will own the throne in the end? Or who will own the throne? Who will own the throne? Yeah. Or what would you wish that this character should own the throne? <laughs> Apart from me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hadn't really thought about that. Um, I don't know, who deserves to be on the throne? I, 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 Daenerys, do you think? Well, she's a bit of a wild card. I think there's so many people who are laying claim to the throne that really only want it for their own uh, vanity and they, they feel it's their right and I don't know why they should be there. Um, they don't seem to want to do anything truly good with gathering all these power and uniting all the nations or anything like that. So I, I, I have nobody at the moment who I, I think deserves to be there. Uh, but I'm sure maybe that will change. I think, you know, Jon Snow, if he was still around, would, <laughs> would, have, made a, would have made a good leader. I really thought he, in you know, the last season, you saw him become a man, you know, and the episode was Kill the Boy, and he did really rise, and I thought Kit did an amazing job, and you saw that he had leadership qualities, and he's one of the few good characters, like all the Starks are, you know. Uh, but Ari has gone off now on a, some strange trajectory, so I don't know. But I don't know who deserves it really at the moment, so apart from me. <laughs> you will never get it. <laughs> no, I'll never get it. <laughs> That's assured. <laughs> so any other questions? Do you think that uh, Ramsey Bolton is, uh, Rose Bolton is um, proud of his son, uh, Rose, uh, no. But Rose Bolton is part of his son Ramsey because of um, he don't. It seems like in, in season four and five, and or does he think or he thinks I take what I have? I have the son, and I have no other. Yeah, I think I think it is. I, I I think he is his his son. You know, he he is, and he doesn't have uh, his two other children are dead, and you know his primary goal is 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 to secure the house and keep House Bolton alive, like Tywin, similarly, or any of the heads of the houses. And it's about assuring that and assuring the, the bloodline and that that carries on. And it's the best choice he has at the time, which is why he legitimizes him. Um, and he tells him, you know, in, in, after he's told him how he raped his mother, uh, more or less that, you know, you're my son and that's as near, as close as you're going to get to I love you, really. So I think at that point, but now the fact that there's a, another child on the way, maybe he's more dispensable. But he has proved very useful to me. And uh, so I think he does, if there's a, affection is probably the wrong word, but it's about the bloodline of the house. And I think he is the only choice he has at the moment. Uh, well, un, until the unborn. Not proud. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say he's proud, no. I wouldn't say he's proud, but um, I think he, does, he certainly does not approve of his statistic and cruel behavior at all. You know. But he, he thinks he's a pretty good military guy. So. But he never helped Sansa. No, he didn't. He's yeah. very... Well, no, yeah, he is. Well, that's where he's very cold and detached and strange, and he has no... No empathy or with that at all, you know? Absolutely not on the way he let him behave at that dreadful dinner party, you know? It, yeah. was, it was incredibly cruel and twisted. And He's more this kind of guy who pushes a red button and something happens far, far, far away. Yeah. So you have no connection. Yeah, yeah. Or he lets don't... it go on for as long and then he just yeah. he stops it. And Ramsey cowers, you know? So... Um, but yeah, no, I don't think he's proud, but he's, he's useful to him for the moment. So even in, even in the last scene where, you know, he said, give me 20 good men and let me go outside, and, you know, Ruse could have had two ideas there. He may have said, well, go out and see what you can do, or at the same time, you could go out and you may get killed because it doesn't matter now because I have another heir and maybe that will be useful to me. So um, 
it's, you never know. It's, as I said, it's, it's probably more what he doesn't say rather than what he does say, <laughs> which makes him very intriguing, I think. <laughs> so one last question, please. Hi. Hello. Um, I don't want to ask a question necessarily referred to the show, but rather um, to you as an actor. Um, how do you deal with, um, with roles that you portray that are, that are not um, good persons, let's say, or, or like, as, um, um, as was said, are villains? Uh, how, how do you deal with, uh, with such experiences? I mean, after portraying a character for years, isn't it the case that the character becomes sort of a part of yourself? <laughs> Well, I was very li I'm very like Bruce Bowden. That's, that's why I got the part. No, it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's something you just, you know, you slip into when you do, really. So, um, but as I said earlier, you know, the villains are great to play and they're, they get great lines and stuff like that. So, no, you just slip into it when you, when you go to work. And I don't bring my work home with me. No. <laughs> no. So one last question, please. Ja, mein Name ist Andreas. Einmal wollte ich wissen, wie sieht ein normaler Tagesablauf bei Ihnen aus? I would translate that. Okay. Und ob Sie noch hier den Sommer genießen hier in Berlin? Oh, okay. Um, he wants to know um, what is your daily normal life? What you do when you're probably not, wenn er nicht, if he's not. Ah, okay. So when the shooting is, what's the normal daily schedule? Is it? Oh, when I'm shooting Game of Thrones? Yeah. Um, well, I travel to Belfast, which is about two hours from where I live. And um, you, yeah, you, they're very early mornings. And they're very, you know, you, it's incredibly well organized. So you, when you're on, you're on that day. And you, 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 you get up and you travel to the sets, which can either be in the center of Belfast or Winterfell is about a 45-minute drive outside of Belfast, and you go out there and you shoot your scene, and you shoot your scene from eight in the morning till six in the evening, and um, you do that, and you wrap, and you may go out for a meal that night, or play some pool, or go to bed, or go home. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty normal. Yeah, yeah. And how will you spend your summer? That was the second part of the question. How will I spend my summer? Well, uh, depending on the schedule, when we got our schedule, but I'm hoping to go away to France and maybe down to West Cork and Southern Ireland and spend some time down there. Uh, so I'm sure I'll be able to fit that in, in between filming Game of Thrones. Don't get any color. Hmm? <laughs> don't get any color. No, no, don't, don't get any color. No, no. <laughs> no. If I, no, if, I don't no get killed in, if I don't get killed in the first scene, or otherwise I'll have the whole summer free. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much for coming. Thank you. thank you. Have a good time at the show. Thank you very much. And yeah, don't get killed too early. I'll try not to. I'll try not to. <laughs> okay. Thank you very, thank you very much. much for coming. There you go. Thank you for coming. Thank you.